In this video, I will show you how to control a servo using the PWM feature in the AVR microcontroller. To be able to use the PWM with the microcontroller to control a servo, we'll need, to, we'll need to do a few things first. We will need to select the appropriate waveform generation mode. We'll need to create our period using the ICR register. We'll need to determine a prescaler and we'll need to determine output mode, inverted or non-inverted. And we'll need to decide whether we're going to be using the OCR 1A or the OCR 1B. Let's start with selecting the correct waveform generation mode, number one here. Let's tackle the first one, waveform generation mode. There are two main versions of the waveform generation mode, phase correct, which is counting up, then it counts down, or fast PWM where it counts up and it goes back down to zero, and it counts up again, and then it counts up again, goes back down to zero, counts up. And you have the option to select the, the very top where it counts up to a particular number and then counts down. You can do it in 8-bit, 9-bit, 10-bit. 8-bit is 255, 9-bit is 512, 10-bit is 1024. And you can do the same thing with the, with the fast PWM where it goes up to 8-bit, 9-bit, or 10-bit. You also have the option of making the top the ICR register. And in clear on timer compare, which is the C CTC mode, you have the option of making the top value either ICR1 or OCR1A. And in the data sheet on page 109, you can see all of these different combinations and how you can create the WGM. We're going to select the fast PWM and we're going to make it so the ICR is the top value. So we can set that top value and get a perfect period, which is here, this, this is our period. And that particular option is option number 14, or mode number 14, where you have WGM 13, 12, and 11 is set. WGM number 10 is not set. Now let's create our period, which is number 2. And we're going to use the ICR1, which we have elected to use with our waveform generation mode. And we're using the ICR1. And the servo calls for 50 hertz. So what we're going to do is first we have to determine if we need to use, use a prescaler or not. So let's find out if our number is going to be somewhere between 0 and 65,535. We have one second. Let's do a period of one second here. And by default, the microcontrollers, the one that I'm using, the 324, uh, comes at one megahertz which is one million cycles in this one second. Since we need 50 hertz, which is 20 milliseconds between each cycle, between each tick of this, let's see how many cycles we get if we divide this second into 50. So that would be one million divided by 50, and we get 20,000. That's 20,000 cycles in between each tick of 50 parts of this one second. And because IC, ICR1 is indexed from zero, it's going to be zero to 19,999. And this number is going to be the ICR number. So if this was going to count from zero to 20,000, we would get 20 milliseconds here. And if we did this 50 times, counted from 0 to 20,000 or 0 to 19,999. If we did that 50 times, it would reach 1 second. So we have our 50 hertz established. And also, since 20,000 cycles falls within our 65,535, we don't need a prescaler, which is just setting the CS10 bit. So we have determined the WGM, the waveform generation mode. We're going to be setting WGM 13, 12, and 11. We've created our period, and our ICR1 is going to equal 19,999. We know that our prescaler needs to be just one, which is um, really we're not doing any prescaling, and that is setting CS10, 
Now we have two options with the output, output mode. It can be either inverted or non-inverted, and this is what this means. The output mode, when you're, when you're doing the fast PWM, and you're counting up, and then it goes back down to zero, and you're counting up, we have our top set at 19,999. And let's say we wanted to do, um, we wanted a pulse that started at zero, or at zero volts. This is our period here. And then we come up at, let's say, two milliseconds before the period ends. And this is our five, five volts. This is actually inverted mode because it starts at zero. It starts at, at the zero volts, and then it jumps up to five volts when the OCR 1A is reached. We can do this the opposite way. We can do this in non-inverted mode. This is the inverted mode. We can do this in non-inverted mode where it starts at the five volts and it goes to two milliseconds and then it goes back down to zero. And then we would have to set our OCR at this point instead. So we have to select between one of these. If we selected the inverted mode and then we had we selected our OCR at this point, then we would have a problem because this would jump up to, to five volts here and then it would have quite a large duty cycle which is outside the limits of the servo. So we have to make a choice whether we want to use this one or we want to use this one. We'll do, in this particular demonstration, we'll use this mode. And to do this, we have to set the COM 1A1 and COM 1A0 bits. And for this mode, the inverted mode, we would have to set both of these. We would have to put ones in each one of these bits. And to use this mode, the non-inverted mode, you'd have to set the 1A1, but not set the 1A0. This would have a zero in that bit, and this would have a one in that bit. Whichever one you choose is fine. You can use either one. You just have to make sure that the OCR register is has the correct number in it. I'm going to use the inverted mode, and I'm going to set the OCR number to 2,000 from the end, which would be 19,999 minus 2,000. And that that's going to give me two milliseconds, because since this is... 20 milliseconds, and this is 20,000, we can assume that each millisecond is 1,000. 20 times 1,000 equals 20,000. So 2,000 would be 2 milliseconds. And our servo will be good in a range between 2,000 and 1,000, generally. So for this mode, make sure that we set both of these to 1. And the COM1A1 and 1A0 also enable the OCR 1A pin. We could also use the 1B1 and the 1B0 and that would enable the 1B. Just by setting these the way we're setting it establishes the OCR 1A as being the output pin for the PWM. If we put zeros in both of these that means we're disabling this pin. So now we've established all of the variables that we need to we can go ahead and start programming. The circuit is very simple. We're not going to be using a, an LCD. We don't really have anything to output. And this will be our output device, which is a, the hobby servo. The OCR1A pin is on pin number 19. And I'm taking the pin number 19 from the yellow. The yellow goes to pin number 19. That's the signal pin. The red wire goes to positive and the black wire goes to the ground or negative. We'll start with our skeleton code. We have the standard include for the AVR devices. We have our main and we have our never ending loop. We will be using the OCR 1A pin to output the PWM. That pin is located on port D. So we have to make sure that the port D has the data direction for output. 0xff is just equivalent to having all of the pins set to 1. That is to say, all of the pins will be set to output. This is the pin that we're using, which is the OC1A, and it's PD5. We could just set only the PD5 pin, but there's no harm in setting all the pins for output in this project. 
So let's take a look at the WGM modes, the waveform generation modes. To find the waveform generation mode table, just go to the left and under the 16-bit timer counter 1, just click on that and scroll down until you see the table. The waveform generation modes are listed here in this table. You have the option of using the face correct mode, the fast PWM mode, and the CTC mode, which is clear on timer compare. You also have the option of setting the top of the count to 8-bit, 9-bit, 10-bit for both the face correct and the fast PWM. And just to reiterate, the face correct is where it counts up to the top from zero to the top and then counts back down. And the fast PWM counts from zero to the top and then resets itself back down to zero and then does that all over again. We'll be using the mode number 14, which is the fast PWM, which counts from zero to the top, which is ICR1. And the ICR1 will determine our period. So to use this particular mode, we will set WGM13, which is the one right here, the one at WGM12, and a one at WGM11. Let's find out where we can locate those. And WGM11 is located inside the TCCR1A register. The timer counter one, control register A. The 12 and 13 are probably in the, the B register. Let's scroll down to the B. And here it is. In the TCCR1B, we have the WGM12 and 13. So let's go ahead and add that to our program. TCCR1A. We'll be using that along with TCCR1B. We will use the OR equals for both of them. And we'll use the shift operator to set the bits. WGM11 was in the A register. And the 12 and 13 was in the B register. We will combine the two shift operators setting the two bits in one line by using the OR operator between the two setting of the bits. Now we can go ahead and set the ICR1 register, which is the top count or which will also define the the period and we're making that happen at the 20 20,000th count or the 19,999 the TCC R1B also contains the prescaler that we need to set so I'll just add it there and the CS10 bit needs to be set which is setting no prescaling now let's find out where COM1A1 and COM1A0 is located in the datasheet. It's not located in the B register, so let's take a look at the A register. Here it is in the control register A, COM1A1 and COM1A0, and we'll need to set both of those to 1. So we can go ahead and make the change in the same line of register TCCR1A using the OR operation. And by doing this, we are making the output from OCR1A to be inverted. And the last thing we need to do is set the servo's position by using the OCR1A register. And we will, we will start by putting in a 2 millisecond pulse. Uh, so that will equal 2,000. But we need to subtract that from the 19,999. We'll make this a subtraction problem. But instead of putting in 19,999, we can actually put in ICR1 uh, register and then simply subtract 2,000 from that. So the 0 volt value will be starting out from the timer 0 um, all the way up to 19,999 minus 2,000, which is around 18,000. This is actually 17,999. Well, we can make it this easier just by saying 18,000. And note that so it's easier, easier to understand what we're doing. Okay, we are finished with this part of the program. Uh, this is all you need to set a servo to a particular position. Let's make and program and see what we get. Okay, the microcontroller has been programmed. And I set the servo to an arbitrary location. And I'm going to plug it in and we'll see if it moves to the location for 2 milliseconds. Okay, that is the position for two milliseconds. You can hear it 
always correcting itself. It's actually ticking a little bit. And it also looks like this is not at 180 degrees um, to one end. So we may have to adjust the, the timing a bit. All of these servos are going to be different in, in, in small ways. The potentiometer inside the servo will have its percentage uh, of inaccuracy, so you'll want to find what that real number is to turn the servo as much as it can. Um, and we can, we can go through trial and error doing that, uh, increasing the 2000 to maybe 2100 and then 2200 until you get a, um, a good uh, end of a rotation. But you don't want to go farther than where it physically, physically can be moved or can be rotated. So you want to keep an eye on that. And then we can also go to the other extreme. So let's do that now. Now let's change this to reflect a one millisecond pulse. The data sheet says we could use uh, 0.9. So let's go ahead and just change this to 900, which is 0.9 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and make and program this and see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and click the button to program and it should just turn. Okay, it did and it went to the other side, but it, again, it didn't go all the way. So we can adjust these numbers a bit to to go farther. The next one, the next thing I want to demonstrate is it moving back and forth, and we'll have a delay in between it. So it'll give it a chance to go all the way to the end, and then go back over, and it'll just keep doing that over and over again. We'll do this in our never-ending loop. So let's perform an action that's a little bit more interesting. Let's make the servo go back and forth from two milliseconds to one millisecond. We'll need to introduce a couple of delays, so we'll have to include the delay um, header file. We need to introduce a delay because every time we um, control the servo to make a turn, the servo takes time to make that turn, and if we try to introduce another uh, control to the servo, it may not have completed the first turn. We'll move the line that controls the servo to the first position into the while loop, the never-ending loop. And since it didn't go um, all the way on the turn, I'm going to go ahead and change it to 800. I'm going to add a delay after this line so it can give it a chance to get to the next position. And I'll use 100 milliseconds. We'll just take the, um, the other control line and just copy and paste it so we insert it after the delay and change this to um, 2100 since I know that the other one, or let's go to 2200, um, so it can go further or um, a further rotation. We need to add another delay after this next statement because we need it to get back to its other position. You'll probably need to use a bit of trial and error to make sure that you have the, the um, good numbers in here uh, and they don't go past their, their limits for the servo. Let's go ahead and do a make and program and see how this works. Okay, the controller has been, has been programmed. You can see it, it goes back and forth and it has a tiny bit of delay when it stops, but it really is just the delay so it can get to that position. So that is how to control a servo using the internal PWM and the PWM output from a microcontroller. Thank you for watching. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the NewbieHack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.